Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Alderson Broadish University on this special day, this beautiful morning, in this glorious setting. Honor graduates, parents and family members, colleagues on the faculty and staff, guests, and friends all. It is my distinct honor and pleasure to welcome everyone to this celebration, the third graduate commencement ceremony of Alderson Broadus University. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us celebrate and rejoice and be glad that we're all together, a unique community among communities to recognize our graduates. And with that thought in mind, graduates, please rise. Let us recognize our graduates today, everyone, huh? <laughs> graduates, please be seated. Today we honor and applaud the accomplishments of talented and hard-working graduate students. Our institution has been dedicated to graduating successful, civic-minded and social-minded individuals who will take their unique talents and skills and knowledge to improve our world. As we recognize our graduates today, we conclude actually the 148th year of our existence. I thought it was highly ironic yesterday at 3 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, I welcomed some of our new and returning students for the 149th year. And one hour later, I had to go back a year, and we had practice for this commencement ceremony. So the legacy continues, the story continues, and the mission continues of who we are and what we're about. I quote, to provide our students with the highest quality education, striving to prepare them to succeed in their chosen disciplines. You've done that. And now to fulfill your roles in a diverse society as well as well-rounded and responsible citizens. And if I can say one thing about the world we live in, we need you. We need those unique talents, the gifts that God has endowed you with, your personalities, maybe your quirkiness a little bit, your sense of humor, because you're the future and you are the hope. This is especially true today as we celebrate accomplishments of our graduates. Alderson Broadus is well known for being first in several areas. The first four-year physician assistant program in the nation was instituted at AB in 1968. In our 50-plus year history, we have set the standard nationally and regionally for excellence in physician assistant preparation. This year marks another wonderful wonderful succession of graduates. But we also today juxtapose another group of graduates with our Masters of Education students seated right over here. And they're prepared to become both teachers and leaders in the classroom. Now a moment ago I used juxtapose. Think about those in the healing profession and those that are teaching, those that need knowledge and learning. That altruistic combination, doesn't that reflect well on our mission statement? I've told many people I'm the proudest person in West Virginia to be the president of this institution. There is no greater honor I have than to be with you and celebrate your day. Your work here at AB is complete. 
you're ready to go. So let's get on with the ceremony. But before we do, I'd like to introduce my colleagues that are seated behind me. And when I call your name, colleagues, please rise and remain, remain standing. And audience, please hold your applause until they have all been introduced. We've already heard from our chaplain, Dr. Carl Giddings. Carl. Mr. Josh Allen is the Associate Vice President of Advancement and Director of Alumni Relations. Dr. Aaron Brumbaugh is Dean of the College of Education and Music and Associate Professor of Teacher Education. Dr. Joe Super is a member of the Alderson Broadus University Board of Trustees and an adjunct senior lecturer in education. Mrs. Cheryl Bowers, Assistant Professor in our Physician Assistant Studies program, and she bears the mace. Mr. Thomas Moore, Dean of the College of Medical Science, Assistant Professor and Director of the School of Physician Assistant Studies. Dr. Joan Props, my good colleague, is Provost and one of our Executive Vice Presidents. Mr. Jeffrey Lamphere, System Executive Director, Advanced Practice, Providers at Wake Med Health and Hospitals, Member of the Board of Trustees, and our commencement speaker today. Please join me in applauding our honored party. Please be seated. Graduates, you have received an outstanding education from us and from a dedicated and caring faculty who have given above and beyond in time, talent, and energy in your preparation as physician assistants and teacher leaders. Would the faculty please stand as the audience joins me in recognizing all of the members of the faculty for their commitment and service. Members of the faculty and staff. The graduate programs require intensive learning experiences and practice environments. Today, we are privileged to have individuals from these settings as preceptors and mentors. Please join me in recognizing all mentors, preceptors, and clinical site coordinators as they stand to be recognized for their role in your preparation and education. I'm not sure if there, anyone is here, but please rise and we'll recognize you. And who could forget parents, grandparents, spouses, spouses-to-be, family members that supported you, that gave you their love, their time, their talent, their resources, that were there during the lonely times, and they're here today to celebrate with you. We thank you all for allowing this institution the opportunity and privilege to teach and to mentor you. We thank you for the sacrifices you have made to make this day possible. And how many times, graduates, did you wonder if you were ever going to get to this day, this glorious day? Please stand, members of the family members and friends, et cetera, of our graduates, so we can thank you for the love and support you have provided our graduates. Please rise. Come on, huh? Yeah, I like it this. Thank you. Please be seated. You know, our commencement speaker today, just a moment or two ago, said to me, you know, who's going to be there? And I said, you're going to be stunned when you walk into that chapel and you see the support, you see the love, you see the embodiment of our mission statement. That's what we're about here. That's why I'm proud, and I suspect you're very proud as well. So the commencement ceremony can now begin, finally, and uh, God bless it.
Today is my honor to introduce the commencement speaker for this wonderful ceremony. Jeff Lamphere has two degrees from this institution, 1986 and 2009. And on the back of your program is a listing of his impressive credentials. But let me tell you about our commencement speaker. And the other day I was trying to figure out what would be the descriptors of our commencement speaker. And I quickly wrote down four or five things. A healer of mind and body and spirit. A visionary practitioner and educator, a loyal son of Alderson Broadish University. And then I wrote, most importantly, a husband, a father, and a brother to those he encounters. So for th the privilege of presenting our commencement speaker, I have this opportunity to introduce you to Mr. Jeff Lamphere. Jeff. It's a tough act to follow. Dr. Barry, Reverend Dr. Giddings, Dean Moore, Dr. Probst, Super, Brumbaugh, Distinguished faculty, family, and friends, welcome. 
Welcome to this commencement address. Today certainly is a momentous occasion, a milestone that you'll never forget. Webster defines a milestone as the day marking a special occasion, an anniversary, or an event affecting an individual or a nation. And this commencement, commencement uh, ceremony is a milestone for you and me. As the ceremony recognizes the beginning of your professional career and the opportunity for me to briefly share some well-earned wisdom with you just before we cut the umbilical cord to use a medical metaphor. I understand that not all graduates today here are PAs. Some of you are educational leaders. I congratulate you on your choice for professional vocation. You too will have an uphill battle addressing endless competing priorities, budgetary restrictions, social strife, opioid addiction, and needless bureaucracy. You see, you're a lot closer to being an ABPA than you may realize. The pearls I share with you this morning apply to you too. There's a favorite scene of mine in the 1992 Al Pacino box hit, Scent of a Woman. Pacino plays a blind, alcoholic, retired army colonel who takes a young college student to New York City for a weekend to remember. It probably was a great weekend. But Pacino teaches the young student, Charlie, played by Christopher O'Donnell, many lessons during the course of the movie. And you hear Colonel Slade bark, pay attention, Charlie. I'm passing out pearls here. I'm passing out pearls. I mentioned that today was a milestone for me. And while the preponderance of this audience may have thought it's all about you, at least for the moment, it's all about me. Lesson number one, rank has its privilege. In preparing to, to give this talk, I had the opportunity to look back over my 30 plus years as a PA and attempt to catalog in 90 minutes or less, no, just kidding, Important pearls to share with you all today. Actually, you don't have to worry about me being verbose. My lectures are notoriously brief. I love bullet points and not endless discussion. I teach in the doctoral pharmacy program and PA program at Campbell University, just south of Raleigh, North Carolina. And a few years ago, I was awarded the Professor of the Year distinction by my students, a noted accomplishment for an adjunct professor. Apparently, those, those, those students appreciated my brevity and bullet points, and I'll try to keep things up to speed, because this is a busy day. Quotations and sayings have always helped me make my point. They keep me grounded. Just as Christ spoke in metaphors, telling stories, and of course, all his words were noteworthy, I've saved a catalog of quotations on my Android over the years. The app Evernote is especially great for writing down medical notes when you're on your hospital rounds, as well as quotations. Evernote. The great Mark Twain once wrote, the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you figured out why. I remember distinctly the specific day in 1981 when I told my parents that I was resigning my commission in the U.S. Navy and also receiving a full-ride academic scholarship to begin a then unknown, uh, to become a then unknown physician assistant. As the story goes, you could have heard the needle slide across the record. We're all familiar with that sound although I realize that most of the students today have never owned a turntable. <laughs> the look in my parents' eyes when I told them this was a very frightening sight, even for a college sophomore. That day was a milestone in my life, although I must admit it was not a particularly pleasant one. In fact, it was horrifically painful. My father accused me of being a coward. You see, the Cold War was in full swing. President Reagan had built a 600-ship Navy, and my dad had served in the Navy in World War II. And now my son gives up a naval scholarship to become a doctor's assistant? It took years to heal those words. Lesson number two, what comes out of your mouth 
can, can hurt a lot more than what comes out of your fist. Show love, compassion, and inclusion and respect in all you do. Remember 1 Corinthians 13. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. As we have unfortunately seen across our nation recently, it's a lot easier these days to hate than to love. Be better than that. Early in your career, it's especially important to remember that God gave you two ears, two eyes, two nostrils, and only one mouth. I recommend using yours in that algebraic proportion. God commands us to love, so go out in the world and love. This is especially true concerning your posts on social media. Most hospitals now have corporate policies policing what gets posted by their employees on social media. Never ever post anything concerning a patient you treated or anything in a negative light about your employer. Seems pretty reasonable, but you'd be surprised how many that do. As an employee, you have no First Amendment rights. If you do post, it should be, I am so thankful that I work at this hospital with these great bunch of PAs, the best bunch of PAs in the country. Never ever post anything controversial or negative. Even if you are right, you will be dead wrong. Lesson number three, remember Mark Twain's, Mark Twain's quote from lesson number one, and figure out quickly, why was I born? What is the meaning of my life? What is my purpose? What, what, what will I become? What am I going to do with my career, my family, my house of worship, my PA profession, my community, my country, my alma mater? Find your passion, find it, do what you love, and love what you do. Another milestone I vividly remember was the eureka moment I experienced after shadowing a first-generation PA in 1980, observing his duties in a rural hospital's emergency room. I knew from that moment on that my life's work will be studying to become a PA, not a naval officer. I was struck by lightning. Many of you today have ho hopefully had similar experiences. I can reassure you students and parents alike that your education at AB has been among the finest in the country. You all are, are about to graduate. You all will pass your boards, 100%. You leave us exceptionally well prepared. Forbes magazine recently awarded the PA degree as the number one coveted master degree in the nation, surpassing the ubiquitous MBA. Last year, U.S. News and World Report named the PA profession as the fastest growing and most coveted healthcare degree in the nation. PAs have been in the, their top 10 degree for over a decade. This did not happen by accident. Dean Moore, together with all his very capable staff, honed your skills, guided your passions, and put, all, put you all on track to succeed. If there's a special secret sauce in the AB program, in, in the AB program's Big Mac, it must be the program's assistant, Bobby Joe Jacobs. Bobby Joe apparently has discovered the fountain of youth in Philippi <laughs> because she helped run our program nearly 35 years ago. I hope you all recognize how dedicated Bobby Joe is and the enormous knowledge of every aspect of the PA profession she has amassed. She is a treasure and should command your admiration, honor, and respect. Rest assured that your alma mater is on firm ground under the leadership of Dr. Barry, his leadership council, and his board of trustees. Did you know that AB acknowledged the unique importance of, that PAs play at AB and that there are two AB alums on their board of trustees? This is monumental and exemplifies the importance and respect our university has for our AB students and PAs. To the best of my knowledge, AB is the only university in the country 
that has PAs serving on their board of trustees. AB has two. Thank you, Dr. Berry, for your inclusion, your respect, and your foresight. As our nation's health care changes, so does higher education. I can't emphasize enough how important it is for you all to join the AAPA, your state PA chapter, and becoming generous supporters of your AB Alumni Association. For to whom much has been given, much is also required. From my early days at AB, I embodied academic preparation, professionalism, and selflessness that paid high dividends in the years to come. It was not easy in the early years. My starting salary was 18,000 per year. I routinely worked 70 to 90 hours per week and two to three weekends per month. Many nurses in the early days fought with us with, quote, I'm not taking an order from you. You're not a doctor, end quote. It took hard work, dedication, patient advocacy, education, and patience to bring the world around. Now nurse practitioners work side by side with PAs in interchangeable roles. PA legislation and hospital bylaws were once rudiment, rudimentary. We've come a long way. I'm grateful for the many AB alums who helped me along the way as well. Lesson number four. We only have 60 minutes, it's okay. Lesson number four. The uniform doesn't make the player, but it is important. Donning a clean, starched lab coat and dressing smartly will not make you a PA, but will, for many patients, uh, set an example of your overall professionalism. Nikes are only okay to wear in a hospital or doctor's office if you're a professional athlete. Sandals if you're a professional volleyball uh, player. To become proficient, you will need to study, 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 and read, read, read. There is much to learn and not a whole lot of time to do it. As a senior hospital administrator, I'm often challenged by being more concerned with what you don't know than what you do know. Work at it and always, always have humility. Study nightly, even after you pass your boards. Expand your clinical knowledge and become proficient in your understanding in the world of medical billing, electronic health record use, ICD-10 coding, and CPT coding. Your life and salary will depend on it. Lesson number five, know your worth. Keep track of your numbers daily. Don't trust your office manager or hospital administrator to do it correctly for you. Keep a log of every procedure you perform, every operation, everything. One of the greatest challenges this in this decade uh, will be for PAs coming out from the shadows cast under the auspices of physician billing. Much of our productivity and value is still hidden because our work is hidden under the supervising physician's billing. Optimal team practice will help, but it will take time. Run patient lists and scheduling reports daily. Keep track of your numbers. And as we say in New York, data matters. Lesson six, always, this is the most important one, always remember Lamphere's law. Attitude plus aptitude equals altitude. Attitude plus aptitude equals added altitude. Have an energetic, optimistic, helpful, humble, and compassionate attitude. You will go places professionally speaking and be fun to have around. You'll have time 30 years from now when you go to your providers for health care with your aches and pains to complain about the younger generation. One of the things I especially uh, look for is attitude over intelligence. I can teach most people anything, but at this stage of your life, I don't need to teach you responsibility, humility, hard work, or why you need to be the first one in the office and the last one to leave. Lesson seven, seek the wise counsel of the elders. Make friends with older PAs who can ground you when you're ready to jump and offer wise counsel and guidance along your journey. 
Even at my age, I have elders who keep me on the straight and narrow, offer sage advice, and usually are a lot cheaper than a marriage counselor or an attorney. <laughs> Lesson eight, when in doubt, better start praying. Remember, prayers of thanksgiving are as important as prayers of request. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you for teaching me and giving me this example. Please, Lord, let me be your servant. I will do whatever you ask, whatever needs to be done. Just remember, I might need a little nudge along the way to point me in the right direction. Remember also that praying hard for something, a new job, a promotion, a mate, doesn't always return with what we ask. Sometimes our request is not in God's plan. We have more to learn. We need more humility. The timing isn't right according to his purpose. Or he might just be protecting us from what lies ahead and is just around the bend. If you trust your God with all your heart, take your hands off the wheel and let him drive the bus. Worry less, trust God more. This is an exceptional great time to be a PA. Every shred of evidence uh, currently supports continued growth and demand for our profession. Our acceptance and our growing presence by patients and, the, and insurers, the value we bring to health care, every shred of evidence. These successes have been achieved because of the hard work of your predecessors and your current profession, 125,000 strong. Much has been gained, but there is still much work to do. There is still a physician shortage, and it's getting worse. America is aging at a rapid rate. Baby boomers like myself demand high-quality health care and are accessing it at increasing levels. Rural health care is getting worse, but we'll tackle it. Rural access hospitals are closing in record numbers all across the country. There is a wide gap between the insured and the uninsured. Despite Affordable, Health, Affordable Care Act and broadening Medicaid coverage in many states. The opioid crisis is real, growing, and may prove to be far costly than, than the AIDS epidemic in the 1990s. Student debt is real and places a high burden on many graduates, but fortunately for you, you all are guaranteed employment upon graduation. The profession will be challenged internally by debate concerning future name of our profession, as well as how to implement optimal team practice, and externally by physicians groups who hold much of the power, nurse practitioners who hold uh, leadership positions in many hospitals at a growing rate, and the question of should PAs obtain doctorate level education in order to be on par with the competition? Lesson number nine. I don't have the answers to the above questions. We will have to address them together as future colleagues. In my humble opinion, no politician on either side of the aisle has the answers either. Medicare for all is impossibly unaffordable. On the other hand, letting the free market sort things out, leaving it up to competition to drive down prices isn't working effectively either. Whenever, wherever you are in the political spectrum, I implore you to keep your opinions off social media and not engage in arguments you can't win, especially when you are at work. At work, the only thing that matters is what you know. No more. My hero in life was the former slave and great Afro-American civil rights abolitionist and orator, Frederick Douglass. Douglas reminds me daily that, quote, if there is no struggle, there will be no progress. If there is no struggle, there is no progress. Anything worthwhile is never easy, and sometimes there is a fight. Choose your fights wisely. I submit you, ladies and gentlemen, that you are all well equipped for the fight. You all will have a very bright future. I am profoundly optimistic that you will all make your mark on history,
touching countless patients and their students' lives. It is an enormous responsibility. Always remember the words of St. Francis of Assisi, start by doing what is necessary, then do what is possible, and suddenly you're doing the impossible. And lastly, to quote the king of pop, Michael Jackson, the greatest entertainer in the history of the world, who in 1982, when I came to AB, uh, published and released the best-selling album of all time, Thriller. I conclude with lyrics that I've always tried to live by. I'm standing with the man in the mirror. I'm asking him to change his ways. And no message could be any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself and make that change. Thank you, and go get it. Well, Jeff, now that you've just seated yourself, I'd ask you to come back up. And we have this token of our appreciation for commencement. Today. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. President Barry, faculty, staff, honored graduates, and our honored guests, friends, and families. Many years ago, Alderson brought us established a program of study, and you've been hearing about it. We prepare physician assistants, the first in the nation to confer a Bachelor of Science degree, now a master's degree. We are here to confer that master's degree to 28 of our graduates. The university has a long and distinguished history of preparing PAs, and it is fitting that we should honor these graduates in this commencement ceremony. Then, as the university embarked upon an expansion into other graduate education programs, the teacher leader program was created. Today, we add the honor of conferring a master's degree to three of our students who are present today, although there were four actually in the program, one was not able to be with us. So therefore, it is also fitting that we honor these graduates in this, the inaugural commencement ceremony for the Masters of Education Teacher Leader. Would all Masters graduate candidates please rise? Mr. President, it is with great pride in their accomplishments that I present these candidates for their respective graduate degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Alderson Broadus University, and with the concurrence of the faculty, I confer upon you the respective degree of Master of Education or Master of Science and Physician Assistant Studies, and invest you with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereunto. In token thereof, I hand you this degree. Marion Catherine Cummings, recipient of the Master of Education.
Erin Catherine Gallagher, Master of Education. Jerry Lynn Heinball, Master of Education. So I don't sound like I'm repeating myself. The remainder of our students are recipient, our graduates are recipients of the Master of Science in Physician Assistant Studies. Charlene Marie Arena, also being recognized as a member of Pi Alpha Honor Society. Rachel Christine Ashley. <laughs> Megan Dawn Bartlett. Pi Alpha Honor Society. Carrie Bedillion. Sean Belts. Vivian Angelica Barcero. Jordan Ann Brewer. Nida Russell Chaudre. Nida, my apologies. 
Nita Chadre. Marie Christensen. Amanda Mary Fitzgerald, Pi Alpha Honor Society. Tanya Marie Gaiman, Pi Alpha Honor Society. Avery Gukin. Jory C. Gotham. <laughs> Elizabeth Catherine. Pulse Claw. <laughs> Alexa Danielle Kenzel. Elizabeth Marie Lutner. <laughs> Melanie Marie Lyon. Michelle Nicolette Mandis.
Elizabeth Sinclair McLean. Robert Oshnock the second. <laughs> Amelia Caitlin Payne. Joe Jackson Pinelli. <laughs> Nikolai Armand Panada. Ethan Ramsey. <laughs> Nicholas Ronald Schubring. Sahara Joel Stanley. Alexandra Tomchik. Rowan Zidan. Please join me in congratulating them once again.
The Alderson Broadus University Alumni Association is proud of your accomplishments. We recognize your achievements, and we want you to know that we will continue to support you and your endeavors as you leave AB to make your mark upon the world. On behalf of all of the alumni of Alderson Broadus University, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the Alumni Association. It is the hope of the Alumni Association that Alderson Broadus University has been woven into your lives as it has been for me and so many others before us. As you move from students to alumni, I want to encourage you to stay connected. We want to hear from you. We want to celebrate your achievements and support you in your career and your service to your community. As you step into the new path ahead of you, I want to leave you with a scripture from Joshua 1.9. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord, your God, will be with you wherever you go. May God bless each and every one of you. Welcome. It is fitting for us to gather today in celebration of your accomplishments. Your labor has not been in vain as you have prepared yourself for a career of service to humankind. In Micah 6, 8, we are reminded of what the Lord would have us to do. And I leave you today with those words from Scripture. To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. I charge each and every one of you, graduates of 2019, sons and daughters of the institution, to honor these words in word, action, and deed. All the days of your life, as we send you forth to carry out the service to humankind for which you have, been, which you have labored and prepared for. I wish you God's blessings. Now, would you please rise and join all of us in singing the alma mater.
good and caring God, bless and guide these graduates as they chart new beginnings. May what they have learned here bring to them a truly wonderful experience. May what we have learned from them enable us to experience the same. Enable them to use what they have learned here to make the world a better place, to serve others in true solidarity and kinship, to seek ways to help the poor, the marginalized, and those who are suffering, and to always seek the greater good. We know that some of them will experience pain and hardship. We know that some already have. We pray that they will find a new sense of your life in their, of your will in their lives. Dismiss us now in his name, amen.